Our fascination as a species with death and all things macabre is something that's been well documented over the years, dating back as far as Greek philosopher Aristotle, who famously wrote, Enjoy contemplating the most precise images of things whose sight is painful to us. We don't have to look too far these days to bear witness to just how commonplace morbid curiosity has become. Just recently, popular streaming service Netflix released a feature-length film on Ted Bundy, and I suspect that this sort of content will only continue to grow in popularity. Aside from the vile act committed by Ted Bundy, I suspect you're probably also familiar with the heinous crimes committed by the likes of Charles Manson, Dennis Rader, and John Wayne Gacy, all of whom have also had films telling of their stories. But what about the ones you don't know about? those sick and twisted individuals who've committed atrocious acts that perhaps haven't gained the widespread attention of the media, or haven't found their way into the latest Hollywood blockbuster. I am Night Terror, and this is Horrifying Humanity, Episode 1. Hello? Six serial killers you've never heard of. Robert Christian Hansen was born in Esterville, Iowa in February of 1939. Son of Christian and Edna Hansen, Robert was a skinny and introverted child who suffered from a speech impediment and severe acne, which would leave him permanently scarred. Due to his afflictions, he allegedly lacked female attention during school and subsequently began to develop fantasies of extracting his cruel revenge upon women. From 1971 onwards, Robert would rape, torture, and sexually assault over 30 women in the state of Alaska, ranging from ages 16 to 41. His killing spree came to a halt in June 1983 when he was arrested following an investigation in which 17-year-old Cindy Paulson managed to escape from Hansen while he was trying to load her into his Piper Strip Club two-seat monoplane. Robert was initially charged with assault, kidnapping, weapon offenses, theft, and insurance fraud. However, after ballistic tests returned a match between bullets found at several crime scenes and Hansen's rifle, he pleaded guilty to four homicides and provided details of his other victims as part of a plea bargain in order to serve his sentence in federal prison. As part of the plea bargain, Robert was acquired to assist in the deciphering of his personal aviation map, which contained markings locating at least 17 of his victims' bodies although there were some markings that he refused to give up. Robert was eventually sentenced to 461 years plus life in prison without a possibility of parole. He later died in prison on August 21st, 2014. David Parker Ray was born in November 1939 in Bellin, New Mexico. As a child, David lived with his grandfather and younger sister due to his father being a violent alcoholic who remained largely absent. However, it's said that David's father would occasionally visit and provide David with sadomasochistic pornography. He was known to be a shy child, particularly around girls, and this led to him being subjected to bullying at his high school in Mountain Air, New Mexico. During his teenage years, David's sister discovered sinister drawings of sadomasochistic acts and pornographic images depicting bondage. It was during this time that David began to develop sexual fantasies of raping, torturing, and murdering women. David would later go on to sexually torture and murder as many as 60 people in the Arizona and New Mexico areas. Investigations found that David used a truck trailer, which he dubbed 
his toy box that was filled with a number of sickening tools, including whips, chains, pulleys, clamps, leg spreaders, surgical blades, and saws. Due to this, David was dubbed the Toy Box Killer. Following several trials, David was sentenced to 224 years in prison for his various crimes. On May 28, 2002, Ray was transported to the Lee County Correction Facility in Hobbs, New Mexico, where he was to be questioned by state police. However, before the interrogation took place, David died of a heart attack. Mary Bell, a British woman from Northumberland, England, was born in May 1957. Mary's mother, Betty, was known to have been a prostitute who often traveled to Glasgow to work and was therefore often absent from the family home. Mary claims that as a child she suffered repeated sexual abuse from her mother who also forced her to engage in various sexual acts with men from the age of four years old. Just one day before her 11th birthday, Mary strangled and killed four-year-old Martin Brown. She and a friend, Norma Joyce Bell, went on to leave notes inside a vandalized nursery in the Stotswood area, claiming responsibility for the murder. Less than a month later, Mary and Norma claimed another life, that of three-year-old Brian Howe in the same area. Police reports say that Mary later returned to Brian's body to carve her initial into the boy's chest, cut his hair, scratched his legs, and mutilated his genitals. Mary was imprisoned in December of 1968 and later released in 1980 at the age of 23. She was given a new identity and anonymity for life, something which is now sometimes referred to in Britain as a Mary Bell order. Jane Toppin was born in August 1854 in Boston, Massachusetts under a different name, Honora Kelly. Not much is known about her childhood, however we do know that she was the daughter of Irish immigrants and that her mother had died of tuberculosis when Jane was very young. It's also said that her father, Peter Kelly, was a known alcoholic and was subsequently extremely abusive. Those who knew him often referred to him as Kelly the Crack. In 1863, Jane's father took her and her older sister to the Boston Female Asylum an orphanage for female children, and surrendered custody of the girls. He never saw either of them again. Jane was eventually placed within the home of Mrs. Anne Toppen, where she worked in servitude. Jane was never formally adopted by the Toppens. However, she took on their family name to become known as Jane Toppen. Jane began training to become a nurse in 1885, she was well liked within Cambridge Hospital where she worked, and she was described by others as brilliant, bright and friendly, and was often given the name Jolly Jane. During her time at the hospital, Jane began to use her patients as test subjects for experiments with morphine and atropine. She would modify the amounts being administered to test the effects on the nervous systems. It's said that Jane would medicate them to the point of drifting in and out of consciousness and would even get into bed with them. Jane would continue this behaviour and go on to begin a poisoning spree in 1895. She eventually claimed the lives of at least 31 people. Jane was eventually caught in October 1901 and went on to say after her arrest that her ambition was to have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. Despite her shocking crimes, Jane was found not guilty by reason of insanity and was committed for life in Taunton Insane Hospital. She later died in October 1938, aged 84. Wesley Allen Dodd was born in July 1961 in Toppenish, Washington. Wesley reported that he was often emotionally and physically abused by his father, was neglected, and witnessed domestic violence between his parents. On Wesley's 15th birthday, his father attempted suicide after engaging in an argument with his wife. 
Wesley began conducting acts of sexual depravity at the age of 13 when he began exposing himself to children in the neighborhood. He was later arrested at the age of 15 for indecent exposure, but was released after a recommendation of attending juvenile counseling. In September 1989, Wesley went to Vancouver's David Douglas Park with a fillet knife and shoelaces with a specific intent to find and kill young boys. He was successful in this endeavor and lured Cole and William Near, brothers aged 11 and 10 respectively, to a secluded area within the park. He tied them to a tree and performed sex acts on both of them before stabbing them repeatedly with a knife. Wesley went on to commit a further murder, this time four-year-old Leah Sally, whom he kidnaps, molested, and strangled to death before hanging him in his bedroom closet. Wesley was finally caught and arrested on November 13, 1989 when trying to abduct a six-year-old boy from New Liberty Theater in Kamas, Washington. During a court briefing, Wesley stated, I must be executed before I have an opportunity to escape or kill someone else. If I do escape, I promise you I will kill and rape again, and I will enjoy every minute of it. Wesley Dodd was executed by hanging on January 5th, 1993. Dennis Nilsson was born in November 1945 in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. During his youth, around the onset of puberty, Dennis became aware of his homosexuality, something which he was both confused and ashamed about. On one occasion, Dennis sexually fondled his younger sister Sylvia, believing that his sexual attraction to males who looked similar to her may be a reflection of the love he felt for her. He also believed that this was evidence of him being bisexual. Later in life, Dennis joined the army where he enrolled as an army chef, a role in which he excelled. During this time in the armed forces, Dennis continued to hide his sexuality from his colleagues choosing to avoid communal showers for fear of becoming aroused in their presence. During his deployment with the Royal Fusiliers, Dennis began drinking to excess with his colleagues on frequent occasions. It was during one of these alcohol fueled nights that Dennis found himself waking up next to his unconscious colleague. Although no sexual activity occurred that night, Dennis began to develop sexual fantasies involving passive, unconscious or dead partners. Over the next few years, Dennis's fantasies would continue to grow when in December 1978, Dennis killed his first victim, 14-year-old Stephen Holmes, after taking the youth back to his house to drink. Stephen Holmes was strangled, drowned, posthumously sexually assaulted, and subsequently stowed underneath the floorboards of Dennis's home. Between 1978 and 1983, Dennis would go on to sexually assault and murder at least 12 males, both adults and young boys, while attempting to kill at least 7 others. His victims were often homeless or homosexual men. He would lure them back to his home, give them food and alcohol, and subsequently strangle and drown them. He would then bathe, clothe, and keep the bodies for several weeks or months before dismembering them and disposing of them in a bonfire. Although, he kept some body parts hidden away within his home, seemingly as trophies. Dennis also admitted, on several occasions, to engaging in sexual activity with the dead bodies of his victims. Dennis was eventually brought to trial in October 1983, charged with six counts of murder and two attempted murders, and sentenced to life imprisonment at Full Sutton Maximum Security Prison on November 4th, 1983. Dennis later died in prison in May 2018 at the age of 72. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Mr. Davis for helping me out with this video, and also to Nefarious TV for the amazing intro. I'll leave links to their channels in the description below, so be sure to check them out. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell, I really appreciate it. Before I go, 
I'd like to invite you all to come and join the We Are Night Terror community over on Discord. There, you can chat with other horror fans and creators, and get a behind the scenes look at what I've got coming up. I'll leave the link in the description below. Also, if you'd like to suggest content for me to cover, you can do so over on the We Are Night Terror subreddit. I'll leave a link to that below as well. Finally, I wanted to let you all know that I now have a Patreon account, so if you feel like supporting this channel even more than you already do, I'd love it if you'd consider becoming a patron. Every penny made will be going towards improving this channel, whether that be new hardware, software, stock footage, etc. With all that being said, thank you again for watching, and until next time, stay safe.